I was struggling yesterday morning, and I, I was struggling to pray, and I was struggling to read. I was just struggling, and uh, just one of them days. I know y'all don't have them, but I do. And, uh, but anyway, I, was, I, was, I told the Lord, I said, I just need to hear from you, and I started reading, and uh, I read Scripture, and, and the Scripture that I was reading was all bring it back, be you renewed in the spirit of your mind, uh, and, and it, it tells, and uh, ask God to bring down the strongholds and the, the, the bring my mind into captivity. And I was praying and all those type things. Anyway, I, I prayed a lot of scripture and kind of got lined out a little bit. Amen? Kind of. And uh, I kind of want to get this. I, I, I'm always studying. I'm always studying and moving into the next sermon what God gives me, and I'm sitting there. I'm, I, I got, I kind of got away from everything yesterday, a little bit, and I uh, had caught up, kind of caught up everything, and I, I, I so I, I spent some time by myself where I could just pray and and seek the Lord. Anybody home? And uh, anyway, that morning, that morning, Chris Crawford sends me this right here, this video. I don't watch it. I'll be honest with you, people send me videos all the time. I'm thinking, I'll watch that later. I always forget. I, I do. And sometimes I, I remember and I go back, and, but I always forget. On up in the morning or maybe the afternoon, Blake Kendall sends me this video. It's the same one. I thought, well, Chris is getting around the good today. He sent it to everybody. Amen. And I thought, I'll watch that later. I'm, I'm, I'm doing other things, and I'm, I'm talking to the Lord, and, and uh, a young lady sends me this video, same one. I thought, well, it's almost supper time. I'll, I'll watch it after supper. Amen? Three times. I come in, and I, my wife makes homemade tacos, and they were good, and I couldn't wait to tear into them things, and I got them fixed, and she said, "Now, I, 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 I want you to listen to this video." I said, "Well, if it's the same three, it's been sent to me today. I guess I need to listen to it." It was, and I listened to that video. God tried to tell me four times yesterday. In my home, and uh, anyway, and, and 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 it made all sense in the world. My mind had done cleared out. I couldn't wait to get up this morning and pray and get in the Word. And, and get, get, on the, get on the trail, but, but I'm going to kind of preach on that tonight because that was the direction I'm heading, amen? And I, I, want, I, want, I want you to know that chatter can come in your mind, but I can tell you, you can still be listening to the right voice, amen? You know, we battle the world, we battle the flesh, we battle the devil. Sometimes chatter of the world in the day and age in which we live, it gets loud and it's just hard to sometimes, it just gets into a hardship. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, the old devil will take over your mind, amen? He, he, if you'll let him, he'll take over your mind. Amen? amen? And the flesh will take over, and the flesh will take over your feelings, and that's where you really get in trouble. If you start going by feelings, you're going to get in big trouble. And uh, what God, the way God has designed it, the way he has designed us, he has designed us to listen to the written word of God, to God the spoken word of God. That's how he has designed a Christian. And I hear Christians say, I, I, I'm not in the Word, but i got a personal relationship with the Lord. Well, I beg to differ. Without the Word, you can't have a personal relationship with the Lord because the Spirit of God takes the Word of God and makes application to our, our lives, and that's how we have a relationship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. And uh, so you, without the Word of God, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. Right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But I want you to give you four things tonight. I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 4, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read verses 33 through 41. Uh, this, is, this is another uh, another thing I had on my mind, and hey, it just all came together. I tell you, if God didn't speak to anybody, he spoke to me, amen? amen. And I hope he speaks to you tonight in Mark chapter 5, verse 33, and, and with many such parables... Uh, spake he, Jesus, the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And, and when they were alone, he expounded all things unto his disciples. 
And the same day when, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and they, they were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat upon the ship so that they, that was full. It was full of water. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, talking about Jesus, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish. And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you, Lord, for always being patient with us. Thank you for being long-suffering and, Lord, for, being, for extending your hand of mercy and grace in our time of need. Lord, there's people here tonight that, uh, that Lord, they're just, that, that, the, the, the day and age of which we live, the, the flesh is loud, the world's loud, the devil's loud, and things are just loud. And they can't hear you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll minister to them tonight in a special way. And, Lord, there's encouragement that can come out tonight. And, Lord, that your people will, will, be, will be encouraged as only you can do that. And, Lord, I pray for someone here tonight that maybe don't know you as Savior, that you'll, that you'll draw them to yourself tonight. But, Lord, that your word may go out and re, may not return void because it's presented by the power of your Holy Spirit. Get me out of the way. I thank you, Lord, for being so patient. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Let me give you four things to look at tonight, and, 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 and you can take it home, and you can chew on it, and you can read on it, but number one tonight, I, I want to talk to you about hearing but not hearing. Sometimes we hear, but we don't hear. My wife says, you can hear fine, you just don't listen. You know, I believe the Lord tells me that sometimes. I'm just not listening. Amen? And it says in verse 33, it says, and, and, and with many such parables, he spoke parables, spake he the word unto them as they were able to bear it. As they were able to bear it. You know, God does speak to us, but sometimes we're not able to bear it. We're not listening in Ephesians 4, 17, it says this. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth, here on out, walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. The vanity of their mind, their flesh. The flesh in our the flesh in our very own thinking. We, we have our own understanding that gets us in trouble. When we lose sight of God's word and we quit, quit, we quit hearing the voice, we quit listening to the voice, our, our understanding gets us in trouble and, and, and the God's word is plumb out of sight. And, and when we replace God's word with our own understanding, then we're becoming a little God. Trying to take a place of our Lord and Savior, God. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not, lean not, lean not into your own understanding. That's where we get in trouble. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Right here. Amen? Don't, don't, I'm not talking about your best friend that's supposed to be the top-notch theologian of the country. You better be listening to this right here. Amen? Because he left us the word of God to govern us. All thy ways, it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your, your paths. And be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, better obey him, and depart from evil. You need to stay away from your feelings. Verse 8 of Proverbs 3, it says, And it shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. How many of you know that you got good marrow, you got good bones? 
Healthy marrow gives you healthy bones. And I can tell you, church, without the Word of God, we don't have healthy bones. And when you go back to Mark and, 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 and look at chapter 4 and look at verse 34, but without a parable spake he not unto them, talking about his disciples, and when they were alone, when they were alone, when they were alone, he expounded, he explained, he, he, he told them all things to his disciples. When he was alone. Ephesians 4, 23, and be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I tell you, you can get along with this word right here, and this word will get in you. Amen? But you need to get alone in this word. Amen? This is God's word to us. Number two, listening to Jesus. It's who we're listening to that's going to determine where we're going to be at in life, church. It says in verse 35, in the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, now, now watch, this is, this is what Jesus said, let us pass over unto the other side. You know, when you, when you listen, when you listen, then you are with him. When you listen to what he says, you are walking with him. And in verse 36, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, he, he, they took him even as he was in a ship, and there was also with him other little ships. So they were all in a ship, and he told them, let us go to the other side. What if some of them said, I'm tired of that trip, I ain't going. That's kind of the way we operate, isn't it? When you go back to Ephesians 4, 23, and it says, and be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind, you know, that's the voice that we should be listening to, this word, the voice. What did that say in that video? Don't, don't leave me. Just listen to my voice. Now, here's a guy that didn't know how to fly, and here's us that don't know how to solve our problems, biblically, but if we'll hear his voice, he leads us. Amen? Amen? Number three. When listening to Jesus, we can't forget who we're traveling with. We do this unknowingly. In verse 37 it says, And, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat in into the ship so that it was now full. It was now full of water. But I want you to see here, and there arose a great storm, and the waves beat the ship. I want you to notice it wasn't just a storm. It was a great storm. It was a great storm of wind and rain and, and high waves, and now it's full of water. I want to say this to you, church, and I, I need you to listen to me. I need you to hear what I'm saying because storms are going to come. And it does not matter whether you're saved or you're lost, storms are going to come. It's just who you're going to allow to guide you through that storm. It's, it's going to matter who you're riding with through that storm. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, is Jesus said that, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. Listen, you live in this world. This world is a cursed world, and I can tell you, bad things are going to happen to Christian. Good things are going to happen to Christian. Bad things are going to happen to the once born. Good things are going to happen to the once born. It's all going to, this is the, the day and age in which we live. This is, this is where we live at today. I can tell you there's going to be hardships. There's going to be storms. They're going to come. And I tell you, if this is our best life now, we're in trouble. <clears throat> but you can't forget who you're traveling with. 
And you don't need to forget who's talking to you. Amen? Number four and the final thing. I want to talk to you about the relationship. In verse 38 it says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. Now I want you to get a good visual of this. In verse 37, There rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full of water. He's laying in the back of the boat. It's full of water. Church, he's laying in the water. He's wet. He is sound asleep in this storm. I want to say it again. He is sound asleep in this storm. I want to say it one more time. He is sound asleep in this storm. And he's wet. The storm's affecting him, but he's still asleep. He is sound asleep in this storm. Are y'all with me? And in verse 38, and they had to wake him. Now I want to ask you something. How can you sleep when it seems that the boat is about to sink? I can tell you, church, it all goes back to the relationship Jesus had with the Father. It wasn't that he was just exhausted. It was also he had a relationship with the Father. He knew the weatherman. And he's not a man, he's a weather god. In John 5, 19, Then answered Jesus and t said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father to do. For what things soever he does, these also the Son does likewise. You see the relationship? They were one. He was listening to the right voice. In John 15, 5, Jesus said to his disciples and us, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now, sometimes we get that all backwards because sometimes we stay up all night worrying and we try to be the vine when we're just a branch. I know y'all don't do those type things, but it can happen. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches, and he that abides in me, now it's a, that word abide, it don't mean camping out. That word abide means a dwelling place. It's where you live. It's, it's where your DNA is. It's your home. You know, it don't matter where Cindy and I travel. We like to, we like to travel and we, see, we like to see things, but man, nothing's better than our bed, our home. Amen. I mean, I mean, you set the thermostat, it's set on 72, it feels 68. Our grandkids come over to sleep, they get cold at night. What do y'all set your thermostat on? We set ours on 67, and they're freezing. We got ours on 72. That's our home. We're acclimated to that home. We're acclimated to 72 degrees, which is really 67 degrees. Amen? We're acclimated to that. And anybody else comes over, they're acclimated to their home. and They, they may be acclimated. I guarantee Dad's at 80, 80 right now. He, he's at 80 degrees in the house. <laughs> and if I do make it to 88, I'll have probably be at 85 degrees in the house. Amen? The older you get, the, the colder you get. I mean, I love to drive by and see his windows open. I think, I wish I could do that. I get hot. Home is where we're acclimated. And see, Jesus said right here, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches, and sometimes we got that backwards, and he, he that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Church, church, listen to me. This is a relationship you can rest on and sleep on, and his name is Jesus. You can actually be in a storm with Jesus and still be able to sleep. In verse 38, he says, And when the hinder part of the sleep, he was asleep on the pillow, and they awake him and say, Master, 
Now watch. Here we are. Carest not, carest thou not that we perish? Do you not care that we perish? See, that's leading to our own understanding. Y'all see that? Master, you don't, don't you care that we're going to perish? <coughs> you know, we, fle- we, we battle the flesh, amen? Then when you look at verse 39, and he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. See, the wind and the storm heard his voice. And there was a calm. I want to tell you something. There's, there's souls in here that's so disturbed that they cannot, they cannot hear God's voice. And God wants you to rest in him and hear his voice. I'm telling you, church, you can be in the middle of a storm and you can sleep like a baby if you'll stay in relationship with the Lord. Because he nails it all down in verse 40. He says, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I want you to go back to verse 34. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when he was alone with them, when he was alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. That's the relationship. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want you to remember this. They saw a miracle, but I want you to know all of them got in the boat and they experienced the miracle. Just because you get in the boat with Jesus don't mean it's going to be smooth sailing. But your relationship with him can be smooth sailing and you can sleep too. It's hard for us to see that, isn't it? But it's true. I, I, was, I was praying one night. I woke up and I was disturbed about a, a matter. And I was, and I, I, and I was, you ever get disturbed about something and didn't have to get jacked up? Okay, I'm the only one. And I started praying. I said, Lord, here's the thing. Here I am. I'm all jacked up. It's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. They're over there sleeping like a baby. And I'm all worried and carried on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to give it to you and let you handle it. I turned around and went to sleep because I really meant it. I'm thinking, why am I, what am I worried about? They're not worried about it. They're not worried about their kids dying and going to hell. Why should I worry about it? I'm concerned about it. Those parents ought to be up. They, they ought to be awake at night praying for their kids. Instead of trying to be a part of the world. Anybody home? All oh, those carpenters for Christ, they got out here all week long. They say, anybody home? Church, some of you in a storm. You can't even sleep, but you can if you'll listen to the right voice. And I love that part where all those, all those others radio in, hey, we're praying for you. And I really love the part where he said, hey, you're about to come to a run, one, run, one runway, and it's going to be lit up. It's going to look like a cross. He said, that's the way home. The cross is the way home. <laughs> he said he landed seven times. <laughs> Amen. He got home because he listened to the right voice. Church, we need to listen to the right voice. And maybe you're struggling that. I don't know. But I tell you what, that, what a great text that is. Amen. How many times have we read that? And how many times we forget it? <coughs> we forget who's in control. He may be back there sleeping, but I guarantee you he's already, it's already, hey, he knew that storm was going to rise before he ever laid down and went to sleep. We ought to know that God's already got it under control before we lay our heads down and we're going to go to sleep. Amen? 
You're not, we're not going to be without bumps in the road, church. We're going to have storms. But you can rest and you can sleep in the middle of a storm if you hear the right voice. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, I thank you so much for your word.